Neil Ferguson, you have written uh, a series of columns going against your dear friend and mine, Paul Krugman. Um, explain. More in sorrow than in anger. Yeah, uh, I know. Paul, I Paul you Krugman sad. is somebody who plays very hardball with his uh, blog and with his column. He uses some very harsh language, derp, dope, mendacious idiot. Cockroach, <coughs> zombie. I think if you're going to talk, he, in the, he in says those these. By the way, he uses these terms every time he starts losing a debate, and I should know. Interestingly, <laughs> you've been on the other side of this. So have I. I've been a poser. I've been inane. He throws these words about on the basis of what? A claim that he has been always right. Quote. He's called everything right throughout the financial upheavals well, when, of the last five been, years. When has he been wrong? Well, this is this is the key point. One, if you actually look at his journalism, I'm a historian. I read documents. The documents show that he completely failed. To Anticipate the nature of the financial April, crisis. April 2010 is the euro itself in danger. In a word, yes. Yeah, 20, 20 separate statements about the high probability of eurozone breakup. Um, I have, I'm the here euro to tell is you at risk of in Berlin. Hey, it's amazing. The euro is still intact. So here, you know, these are two clear predictions. One was that the housing boom would lead to a dollar crisis because of the current account deficit. Wrong, that's not what happened. That was the one thing that did not happen in the financial crisis. And by the way, he got very angry when I actually quoted him saying that the dot-com boom and that bubble needed to be replaced by a housing bubble. Yep. Doesn't, he doesn't like when you actually throw his well, words back at him. In fact, he accused me of ad hominem attacks. So he, uh, he and I to do simply that when you criticized quoted, him. No, I didn't criticize him. I quoted his book that he wrote in 1996. I said, you know what? I agree with a lot of well, this stuff. I agree that entitlements are a grave danger. And then, of course, he then feels compelled to say that's an attack. And boy, we... Well, well I agree that he's won an amazing intellectual victory uh, over himself. Because, of yeah. course, <laughs> his position on the federal debt is 180 degrees from what it was back 10 years ago when he was warning, warning of a fiscal train wreck. He, he, he actually said we could not afford a, could not afford a wreck. Uh, Iraq because of uh, the fiscal crisis, uh, our huge debt. Right. He said we couldn't afford any more tax because of our huge debt. And suddenly, we've got no problem with it. With huge it debt. Twice the size in relation to GDP that it was back then. Well, what's it, crucial? it was actually back then when he was complaining about it, it was about $6 trillion. Now it's $16.7 trillion. Right. And suddenly, it's $16.7 trillion. It's not a problem, but when it was George W. Bush, it was a grave crisis. Krugman's key claim is that we should have done a much bigger stimulus, three times the size of the one we did in 2009, and there would have been no downside risk to the creditworthiness of the United States. Yeah. I don't think that claim is plausible, and the reason I don't think it's plausible is that it's not testable. It's based on his models, his beloved models. No, not the kind of models you're thinking of, Harold. These are economic <laughs> models. <laughs> and I have to say, <laughs> you know, these models, wow. these models yeah. were so, you know, these he, models well, he knows knows Harold about <laughs> <them. He knows laughs> my wife. You know, yeah, these your models, wife no I'm yeah. sorry, I shouldn't be, I should, there shouldn't be levity in this discussion. <laughs> Serious. But, you know, these models failed to, pre like, they like, failed to predict the financial crisis. They were really wrong about that. And I show that in my Huffington Post article yeah. on the second day. There is and a, they were totally wrong about the euro. Totally wrong. To the third, the, the, it's a, right. the third of the third part series on uh, Krug, Krugtron, the Invincible. That's what he calls himself. Just came out. He did, does call himself that. So, anyway, you got to read that. He so, called himself that? Fun. Yeah, he, he glories. You see, it's the hubris of it. But I'm, I'm here to tell him that in public exchange, in public discussion, there needs to be humility, honesty, and civility. Oh. That's all. And that's so, what he lacks. And there's no accountability. So no you, one seems to edit that blog in the New York Times. And it's time that somebody called him out. People are afraid of him. I, I, I actually won't <laughs> tell you which public editor it was, but one of the public editors of the New York Times uh, told me off the record after my debate that their biggest nightmare was his column every week. Well, that they should it was, do something about that. It was, well, Deal they, with it, New York Times. All right.